Hello football friends, Cav1892 here. Welcome to the first ever video on my channel. And today we'll be looking in depth at the 90 rated George Best right wing card. I'm brand new to content creation, so please like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff if you'd like to see more videos. So without further ado, let's get into the review. So let's take a look at George's bio. So firstly, his height is five foot nine. He's middle of the road, so he should have enough agility to be able to turn quite quickly, dribble quite well. You'd expect also at five foot nine that he should have some level of strength to be able to compete with the bigger players. His work rates, attacking is medium and his defensive work rates are low, so we'll see how those translate in game. They often don't translate directly. And his preferred foot is his right foot. Four star skills, four star weak foot, George is solid in both departments. Again, we'll see how those work in game, but overall looking very nice so far. So looking at George's attributes, his pace is obviously striking straight away at 90, so should be very quick in game, particularly with that 92 acceleration. Looking at his shooting, very solid all round, particularly that 93 finishing should be very nice in game, but even his long shots and shot power up at 86 and 87, again they should give him more than enough to beat the keeper more often than not. His passing looks hit and miss, obviously his vision and his crossing look fine, long passing stands out has been very very good as well, but the short passing of 76, that could be a problem, although as we all know, passing this year is a mixed bag anyways. His dribbling, this is where he looks cracked. George's dribbling is high 90s and all the ones that matter. Yes, his reactions and balance are slightly lower, but realistically speaking, with that 5 foot 9 frame and those high dribbling stats, he should be very, very competent in that area. I'd expect big things. George's defending looks like what you'd expect for a right winger. He's low 50s, low 60s in terms of interceptions. I don't think he's going to set the world alight there, but we'll see how he translates in game. In terms of his physical, the big standout concern obviously is his stamina. If you're thinking of bringing George into foot champs, you could be looking at 120 minutes. I really doubt, unless you have very specific instructions on him, that that's going to last you the full 120 minutes. His strength, well, it's 68 and obviously aggression is 61. Depends on the player, but we'd expect him to be average enough in that category. We'll see again how he translates in game. Traits and George doesn't have a huge amount going on here. His flair trait obviously is nice to get you out of a couple of sticky situations but obviously the standout concern here is that he's missing the outside foot shot trait and the finesse shot trait both of which are very powerful this year so we'll see how he manages without those in game. So let's get into the gameplay. Let's look at George's pace. He's quick. He's really quick. George can compete with almost anyone down the wing. If you're playing him in behind with a through ball, he has the pace to leave most defenders chasing his tail. He's very quick over one or two yards, and that's definitely where his strength lies. And his top end speed is good, but not top tier. He will get caught by most of the quicker defenders if he's dribbling with the ball, or has a longer sprint in behind. Overall, George's pace does hold up to the stats, and I'd give him a 91 overall. George's shooting is very solid, and it's definitely the best part of the card. His attacking position is incredible and is in my opinion the best feature of the card. He moves into areas and positions that other players don't even see and finds gaps around the box to exploit. He knows when to hit the channel and well to dive between the centre back and the full back. He finishes really well off both feet and that high long shot attribute definitely stands to him as he moves further from goal. The lack of shooting traits aren't a huge issue and he always brings a save from the keeper. The consistency of his shooting makes him really useful in clutch situations where you can't afford to miss the target. Overall, I'd mark his shooting as 91, so slightly above expectation. George delivers a solid performance with his passing too. The high vision compensates for a low, short passing stat, and you rarely notice it in game as an issue. I threw him into CM for a couple of games for the crack, just to see how he'd perform in tighter situations, and he can manage comfortably. He's not a top tier passer by any means, but he's solid and delivers as required, particularly for any sort of right attack in mid, left attack in mid or wing type roles in general. His long passing is a joy to use though, and those double tap or over the top true balls both work incredibly well with this card, despite having an average enough curve stat. He can fire passes through tight spaces and around corners in a relatively consistent way. His crossing is nothing more than 87 suggests though, and again, he can hit the target when needed without doing anything too special. Again, you can use both feet, and you rarely notice a difference between the accuracy on either foot. George was very proficient in racking up the assists from the right side in foot champs, and you can deliver solid passes when you need them the most. George won't be taking your free kicks though. He's not in any way proficient with these, and unfortunately doesn't have any hidden stats to boost these past the keeper and into the net. 
I'd give Best an 85 in passing, so above his face stat, but nothing crazy either. He performs solidly here. George performs very well in the dribbling category, and generally the ball stays nice and tight to his body when using modified or agile dribbling. He can change direction really quickly due to that high agility rating and medium height build, and can really take advantage of defenders over committing or making an error, particularly given his pace off the mark. But it doesn't feel top tier, and that's probably down in part to his lack of 5 star skill moves. His balance is good and doesn't really feel an issue in game, unless you're passing or shooting at a really poor sprinting angle. The star stat of this category for me though is his high composure, and it's so noticeable over a sequence of games. You'll quickly realise that this card doesn't make catastrophic errors or miss golden opportunities because of it. Instead, George delivers a high performance game after game. I would rank best 90 in dribbling. I was disappointed overall based on what I thought would be a cracked card with everything coming together from those high individual stats, but he's still very good and does benefit from the ball sticking to him in a BS way at times, which will make your opponent rage. Defending is another area where this card is actually better than anticipated, although it may be negligible depending on where you play him and how you play. He can intercept the obvious passes and his tackling is actually pretty decent. Just don't expect him to cleanly collect the ball too often, although that's a trait of FIFA 21 in general. His defensive awareness is actually very solid though, and he takes up good positions to cover passing lanes and out of position teammates on occasion. All things considered, I think around 65 is fair here. Stamina is the biggest weakness on the face of an otherwise very consistent card, but actually his work rate seemed to bizarrely help his stamina from draining as much as it should, even though he feels more like a high medium in game rather than a medium low. He won't make 120 minutes in champs though, he'll just about see out 90, unless you're plaguing him with a load of manual instructions or playing him down the middle. He's not physically the strongest or best in the air, but he can hold his own, and I wouldn't say he's weak, just not particularly strong either. Overall, I'd say 72 is about right here. So coming to the summary, this is a real nice card in general without any major issues. If we compare the ratings to the base stats on the face of his card, we'll see that Best outperforms most of his expected performance levels. The only real area that disappointed me was his dribbling, although in saying that, other than his defending being much better than I'd hoped for, everything else was only fractionally better than anticipated, so he was pretty much as expected overall. Looking at the pros, his forward movement is definitely the standout feature of this card, with that sweet movement in the attacking third and his ability to find space in tight situations. Best consistency means that he always does a solid job. He's one of those 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10 in every match type of performers, without often being unbelievable either. His weak foot is probably more of a 4.5 and definitely does not disappoint, even without the key shooting traits. The cons of this card are minor issues that you expect on purchase. His strength is average and reflects his stats in full. He can't keep the ball away from stronger players too often. His stamina does perform better than expected, but still is a weakness of the card, and he won't last the full champs games if they go to extra time, unless you really look after him on those instructions. On the flip side, if you ask a lot of him, he won't even make the 90 and will need subbing around the 70 mark. His passing is fine, but it's just that. He can tread a great true ball in behind for sure, but that's not a major value when he's often the one on the receiving end of a treaded pass, and his short passing is also fine, but again, nothing special. Chem styles. Hunter gives him that pace boost to make him difficult to deal with, and most other options don't really make sense to me. You can play him at Ram, right mid, right wing, or on the opposite side, and he'll perform great. And you can do a really solid job at ST too, although success there will depend on your playstyle. If you are playing him as an ST, you might consider a Hawk, but you'll need to consider what's around him. Overall, I'd give best an 89. The lack of 5 star skills and high end performance really keeps him from being top tier but he's a consistent performer and a welcome addition to any side. At the moment, he trades for about 1.4 million on PlayStation 4, and in my opinion his value comparatively is just not there. You are being milked due to a lack of high-end options in the right wing, right mid position, and if he was a central player, he'd obviously be much, much cheaper. I would say 1 million, maybe 1.1 is much more where he should be at the moment, allowing for the icon links and position. But look, if you do need a right wing icon to get another player into your squad on 10 chem, you could do worse than decide to pay the coins for him. So that concludes my first ever player review. As I said, I'm new to content creation, so please give a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more reviews of cards like this in the future. Let me know what cards you'd like to see reviewed in the comments below. Thanks for watching Football Friends and I'll see you all in the next video.